Margaret Atwood is one of Canada's finest living writers. A recent visitor to Australia, she is a poet, novelist, story writer, and environmental activist. She has numerous literary awards, including the Booker Prize. Listen to two samples of her magical writing. The first, Bring Back Mom, a poetic invocation to mothers everywhere, and the second called Post-Colonial, a telling essay about boat people. I'm Kim Dodsworth, your Queensland storyteller. Bring Back Mom, Bread Baking Mom, in her crisp gingham apron, just like the aprons we sewed for her in our home economics classes and gave to her for a surprise on Mother's Day. Mom, who didn't have a job because why would she need one? Who made our school lunches, the tuna sandwich, the apple, the oatmeal cookies wrapped in wax paper with a rubber band she'd saved in a jar? Who was always home when we got there, doing the ironing or something equally boring? Who smiled the weak smile of a trapped drudge as we slid in past her, heading for the phone, filled with surliness and contempt and the resolve never to be like her? Bring back Mom, who wanted to be a concert pianist, but never had the chance, and made us take piano lessons, which we resented. Mom, whose aspic rings and jello salads we ate with greed, though later derided. Pot roasting Mom, expert with onions, though anxious in the face of garlic, who received a brand new frying pan from us each Christmas, just what she wanted. Mom, her dark, lipsticked mouth, smiling in the black and white soap ads, the aspirin ads, the toilet paper ads. Mom, with her secret life of headaches and stained washing in irritated membranes. Mom, who knew the dirt and hid the dirt and did the dirty work and never saw herself or us as clean enough. And who believed that there was other dirt you shouldn't tell to children and didn't tell it which was dangerous only later. We miss you, Mom, though you were reviled to great profit in magazines and books for ruining your children. That would be us, by not loving them enough, by loving them too much, by wanting too much love from them, by some failure of love. Mom, whose husband left her for his secretary and paid alimony. Mom, who drank in solitude in the afternoons, watching TV, who dyed her hair an implausible shade of red, who flirted with her friends' husbands at parties, trying with all her might not to sink below the line between chin-up and despair, and who was carted away and locked up, because one day she began screaming and wouldn't stop and did something very bad with the kitchen scissors. But that wasn't you, not you. Not the mom we had in mind. It was the nutty lady down the street. It was just some lady who became a casualty of unseen accidents and then a lurid story. Come back. Come back, O oh mom, from craziness or death or our own deranged memory. Appear as you were. Queen of the Waffle Iron, generous dispenser of toothpaste, sorceress of mercurochrome player of games of smoky bridge, at which you won second prize dish towels. Brooder over the dining egg that hatched nothing but socks. Boiler of horrible porridge. Climb back onto the cake mix package. Look brisk and competent, the way you used to. If only we could call you. Here, Mom, here, Mom, and you would come clip-clopping on your daytime Cuban heels, smelling of sink and lilac, your bum encased in the foundation garment you'd peel off at night with a sigh like a marsh exhaling, saying, What is it now? And we could catch you in a net and cage you in your bungalow where you belong and make you stay. Then everything would be all right, the way it was when we could play till after dark on spring evenings, then sleep without fear, because you threw yourself in front of the fear and stopped it with your body. And there you'll be, in your cotton house coat, holding a wooden peg between your teeth as the washing flaps on the clothesline you once briefly considered hanging yourself with. But forget that, there you'll be, singing a song of your own youth, as though no time has passed 
and we can be careless again and embarrassed by you and ignore you as we used to. And the holes in the world will be mended. And now we have Margaret Atwood's second short work today, Post-Colonial. It's about boat people. We all have them. The building with the dome, late Victorian, solid masonry, stone lions in front of it. The brick houses, three-storey, with or without fretwork, wood or painted iron, which now bear the word historic on tasteful enameled or bronze plaque and can be visited most days except Monday. The roses, big ones, of a variety that were not here before. Before what? Before the ships landed. We all had ships landing. Before the men in beaver hats, sailor hats, top hats, hats anyway, got out of the ships, before the native inhabitants shot the men in hats with arrows, or befriended them and saved them from starvation. We all had native inhabitants, Arrows or not, it didn't stop the men in hats, or not for long, and they had flags too. We all had flags, flags that were not the same flags as the flags we have now. The native inhabitants did not have hats or flags, or not as such, and so something had to be done. There are the pictures of the things being done, the before and after pictures, you might say, painted by the painters who turned up right on cue, we all had painters, they painted the native inhabitants in their colourful, hatless attire. They painted the men in hats. They painted the wives and children of the men in hats. Once they had wives and children, once they had three-storey brick houses to put them in. They painted the brave new animals and birds, plentiful then. They painted the landscapes before and after, and sometimes during, with axes and fire busily at work. You can see some of these paintings in the historic houses, and some of them in the museums. We go into the museums where we muse. We muse about the time before. We muse about the something that was done. We muse about the native inhabitants, who had a bad time of it at our hands despite arrows, or conversely, despite helpfulness. They were ravaged by disease. Nobody painted that. Also hunted down, shot, clubbed over the head, robbed, and so forth. We muse about these things and we feel terrible. We did that, we think, to them. We say the word them, believing we know what we mean by it. We say the word we, even though we were not born at the time, even though our parents were not born, even though the ancestors of our ancestors may have come from somewhere else entirely, some place with dubious hats and with a flag quite different from the one that was wafted ashore here, on the wind, on the ill wind that we also muse, has blown us quite a lot of good. We eat well, the lights go on most of the time, the roof on the hole does not leak, the wheels turn round. As for them, our capital cities have names made from their names, and so do our brands of beer, and some, but not all of the items we fob off on tourists. We make free with the word authentic. We are enamoured of hyphens as well. Our word, their word, joined at the hip. Sometimes they turn up in our museums, without hats, in their colourful clothing from before, singing authentic songs, pretending to be themselves. It's a paying job, but at moments, from time to time, at dusk perhaps, when the moths and the night-blooming flowers come out, our hands smell of blood. Just the odd whiff. We did that to them. But who are we now? Apart from the question, who are we now? We all share that question. Who are we now? Inside the we corral, the we palisade, the we fortress. And who are they? Is that them, landing in their illicit boats at night? Is that them, sneaking in here with outlandish hats, with flags we can't even imagine? Should we befriend them or shoot them with arrows? What are their plans, immediate, long-term? And will these plans of theirs serve us right? It's a constant worry, this we, this 
them. And there you have it, in one word, or possibly two. Post-colonial. You've been listening to the inspired work of a literary genius, Margaret Atwood. It's been an honour and a privilege for me to attempt to read her wonderful writing. I hope you'll join me again this time next week when I'll have more writing of quality for you. I'm Kim Dodsworth, Queensland Storyteller.